it is retail earnings. Big names like Home Depot, Macy's, Walmart, JCPenney, Nordstrom. Many more are also reporting. We have the number one retail analyst with his uh, a preview, J.P. Morgan's Matt Boss, joining us live from New York City. Matt, welcome back. Thanks for having me. How should we be thinking about these names that are coming down uh, the pike this week? Macy's, obviously, um, has done incredibly well lately. You want to take that one first? Yeah, absolutely. You know, what I would say, and, and you guys touched on some of it on the more positive side, 5% nominal GDP and unemployment below 4%. The picture and the narrative of the stronger consumer we think continues. I think second quarter as a whole was very strong for the retail sector. Our preview today, and we actually previewed the dollar stores last week, roughly 80% of the companies that we cover we think are going to beat both the top line and the bottom line this quarter. And I think Macy's will be the first up on Wednesday. I think they put up a strong comp. We're at a plus 1% same store sales. That actually has a headwind of roughly 250 basis points as they lapped friends and family a year ago. So that would be almost a 2 to 3 percent underlying run rate of same store sales. Just a different trajectory than this company has been operating on. We also think Kohl's follows it up similarly. But again, the bigger picture here is I think this stronger underlying consumer narrative. I think that's going to be the theme that, that we get coming out of the second quarter and right into back to school. So have, have we come back in these names in, in part because they've come from such a low base or were, were some of the most dire concerns related to Amazon just <clears throat> simply overblown? I, I think it's a combination of both. So if you remember a year ago, I actually was on Jim's Mad Money show. And, you know, what was interesting is the conversation at that time was death of the mall, death of retail. It was all about Amazon taking share. I think that you've seen these companies fight back. I think e-commerce and the investments that, say, a Macy's has made, that a number of the different global brands have made in direct-to-consumer, I think is part, partly factoring into it. I also think, as I mentioned, the macro, again, 5% GDP here and looking at unemployment below 4%. I mean, these are decade best numbers. So I think it's a combination of macro underlying, but also micro initiatives as you look company by company. And that's what we're trying to do is more take a selective look at the space, not just buy a basket, because there is a lot of headwinds. There are companies actually going bankrupt in the retail sector. You look at Toys R Us. And so it's not entirely a rosy picture, but those that are spending, those that have actually put the initiatives in place, I think there is room with the underlying consumer backdrop. Matt, I'm so glad you're on because your piece today, which talked about how Macy's could be uh, the outlier positive because they report this week. But you also mentioned JCPenney. Is there a uh, is something going on at JCPenney that actually benefits as like a share donor the way Sears used to be a share donor? So I think one thing that we've been uncovering in some of our work is that the consumer with a few extra dollars in their pocket is actually trading up to national brands. And so I think you're seeing it in the results. Uh, you know, we, we favor VF Corp, PVH, Lululemon. I think the national brands that are putting forward the innovation, you're actually seeing the trends there. And so as you think about the mix of a Macy's versus, say, a JCPenney, I think that favors a Macy's over the private label uh, or the fast fashion retailers in the mall. And so I think this trade up is favoring the retailers that are selling the innovative national brands. We also like those global brands, as I mentioned, the Nikes of the world, the VF Corps, the PVHs, and the Lululemons. I think that's where you really want to be thinking about in this underlying stronger consumer backdrop. Where does the consumer want to be spending? And interestingly, that's a theme that we've heard for the first time really since the financial crisis. Well, for the last couple of years, it's been all about value. Hey, but Matt, I'll tell you something. Just a few weeks ago, we were worried about who has China exposure. Who is using private label? They're making it in China. Shouldn't we be concerned? What happened to that worry? No, it's, it, it's, it's an interesting point, and it's still a concern. What most companies are telling us they, can, they have been diversifying their production over the last couple of years. And what interestingly, if you take the handbag uh, manufacturers as a perfect case in point, both Coach and Coors were telling us they could shift production to 0% from, for, directly from China within one to two seasons. And so it's something to be aware of. You know, it's something to rank from top to bottom who has the most exposure if an announcement was incrementally uh, larger as it relates to uh, tariffs today. But at the same time, I think companies have been preparing for a while and diversifying the distribution bases. And so I don't think in of itself it's a reason not to invest in the consumer space. So, so Matt, I hear you on the strong consumer, and I, I completely agree. So you'll get the sales numbers 
What about margins? How worried are you about higher wages, higher commodity costs, and the pressure that that's going to create on margins and therefore kind of limit the operating leverage to your group? Yeah, it's a great question, Stephanie. So what I would say is on the wage front, it's something similar, similarly that companies have been embedding. And so most of the companies that we cover, you know, they speak to it in the fixed cost leverage in terms of what type of same store sales do they need to leverage the SG&A base. And for the most part, the changes and 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 the uh, and the and the embedded headwinds really went into place about a year ago. So on the on the wage front, we're now into the third year of higher minimum wages. On the transportation front, we've suffered through the higher freight this year. So I actually think as you move into next year and beyond. The bigger question is going to be what do you see from the underlying consumer spending, meaning do these wages translate to additional top line upside? If so, I think the wages and the SGNA, the spending, uh, th that piece is in the models, but what's not in the models would be an incremental, it would be incremental tailwind from those dollars entering the consumer wallet. In part to Stephanie's question uh, and to your point about the, the backdrop being so positive, it's back to school shopping season. Are, are we having to see, I'm thinking that we would see less discounting than we've seen in the past few years because the environment appears to be, as you laid out, much stronger than it's been more recently. Yes, inventories are clean nearly across the board at retail. It really started this uptick in consumer spending last year's fourth quarter. So interestingly, for this year's third quarter, which is back to school, to me, that's the full year rounding of this underlying strength that we saw really kick off in last, last year around Christmas. So that, not only that, back to school weather across the country looks to be the best in five years, according to Weather Trends International. So you have strong weather, strong underlying macro backdrop, and really the, the full year rounding of you know, the best holiday that we talked about in five years last year. I think that that's gonna be followed up and fully cycled here with the best back to school that we've seen in five plus years. So um, I don't know how else to ask this other than what's up with you in Under Armour? Stocks had such a good run, you gotta sell on it. A $16 price target. Oh, give yeah, so, <laughs> you know, in the athletic sector, that's actually one company where, as we talk about inventories, they're actually heavily concentrated right now in the off price sector. So, the tale of two halves on Under Armour with uh, improving margins, improving top line as we move into the back half of the year. I think the big uh, question mark there will be, can that consumer overnight make that change from seeing this product in TJ Maxx, buying it on discount to buying it on full price? Athletic remains a very, very competitive backdrop. Um, and so the, the path won't be easy. They have an analyst day coming up here uh, toward the end of the year and, uh, and we'll await further, uh, further financial uh, details. Any reaction to El Arian joining the board? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Uh, again, I, I think this company has a, a number of challenges. I think what they're, what they're operating now and, and uh, the, the president that they brought on to, uh, to actually help navigate it with, uh, with CEO Plank, I think was a step in the right direction. Uh, he, he came on from VF Corp. They're making a number of changes. But again, I, I just don't think it's going to be an overnight turn.